Hi guys, today we're going to talk about solids of revolution rotated around vertical lines to the right of the y-axis. So let's take a look at this problem. Find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the area bounded by y is equal to x to the power of one third, that is the pink function right here, and y is equal to x squared, which is the yellow function, around the line x is equal to 2. So if we take the area between these two functions and we rotate it around the blue vertical line, what kind of three-dimensional object are we going to get? Well, we're going to get something like this. So this is our three-dimensional object, and we want to find the volume of this object. So the volume of this solid, so just V solid, is equal to the volume of the outside function. So the outside function is y is equal to x to the power of one third. And we don't forget to minus the volume of the inner function, so v in, where the inner function is y is equal to x to the power of two. Now, if you remember from my previous videos, what is the formula to calculate the volume of an object? Well, it's simply the integral from a to b and in this case a to b is just the distance from here to here which is from 0 to 1 so the boundary goes from 0 to 1 of a of y dy where a of y is the area of the cross section so i'm just going to take this right here to be the cross section and we know that this cross section is a circle for this volume for the volume of the inner function it is the same thing. So the integral from 0 to 1 of a of y dy. The next step is to find the area formulas. So a of y is the same as pi times the radius to the power of 2 because we're trying to find the area of the circular cross section. So what is the radius? Well, we know that the distance from here to here is 2 because this is 0 and that's 2, right? So the distance has to be 2 in between. And we know that from the center until this distance, so this distance where the cross section is, so from here to here is just y. And the distance from the y-axis until it touches the function is x. So meaning this distance right here is x. That's just x. So this means <laughs> that the radius is right there. That's the radius of the circular cross section. And that is simply 2 minus x. So this is 2 minus x. So let me rewrite this area formula. That is just going to be pi times 2 minus x to the power of 2. So I'm going to show you a trick. The radius, you can always find the radius using this formula. So just take the right x take the right x, which is 2, and minus the left x. So the left x is just x, right? So you just minus x. And that's always going to give you the radius. You can use the diagram or you can use this formula, whichever way you prefer. Now, since we are integrating with respect to y, we need to rewrite the area in terms of y. So let me show you how to do that. Now we know that this function is y is equal to x to the power of one third. So y is equal to x to the power of one third, which means that x is equal to y to the power of three. You just take both sides to the power of three and this is what you get. So the area is the same as pi times two minus y to the power of three, and this whole thing to the power of 2. And we're ready to put this back into our integral. Let's do the same thing over here. So the area is also pi times the radius to the power of 2. Because that's the area for a circular cross section. And since we pick the cross section to be here, then the distance from the center until we reach the cross section is y. We also know that the distance from the y-axis until it touches the function is x. We can call that distance x. 
and the distance from here until it reaches the vertical line, or we can just do it like this. So the distance from here to here is 2. So if you take a look at this diagram, the radius, which is this distance, is just 2 minus x. So let's put it back into our area formula. So the area is equal to pi times 2 minus x to the power of 2. Now, since we are integrating with respect to y, we have to rewrite this function in terms of y. So we know that this is y is equal to x to the power of 2. So here is y equal to x to the power of 2. And this means that x is equal to y to the power of 1 half. So this is the same as pi times 2 minus y to the power of 1 half to the power of 2. And so we successfully rewrite this in terms of y. Let's put it back into our integral. Now, since both of these integrals have the same boundaries, we can just smash them together into one integral, and that's going to simplify a lot of things. So the volume of the solid is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times 2 minus y to the power of 3 to the power of 2 minus pi times 2 minus y to the power of 1 half to the power of 2 dy. And the next step is to factor out the pi. So since pi is just a number, we can just bring it outside of the integral. So this is the same as pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 minus y to the power of 3 to the power of 2 minus 2 minus y to the power of 1 half to the power of 2 dy. Now looking at this, the first thing we have to do is solve for this. So 2 minus y to the power of 3 to the power of 2 is the same as 2 minus y to the power of 3 times itself. Now 2 times 2 is going to be 4. 2 times negative y to the power of 3 is negative 2 times y to the power of 3. It's the same thing here. So minus 2 times y to the power of 3. And negative y to the power of 3 times itself is positive y to the power of 6. So let's just put it like this. Let's just put it as y to the power of 6 minus 4 times y to the power of 3 plus 4. So let's put this back into our integral. Let's do the same thing for this one right there. So this is the same as 2 minus y to the power of 1 half times itself. Now 2 times 2 is going to be 4. 2 times negative y to the power of 1 half is negative 2 times y to the power of 1 half. And this right here is going to be the same. So minus 2 times y to the power of 1 half. And negative y to the power of 1 half times itself is just positive y. And so this is the same as y minus 4 times y to the power of 1 half plus 4. And let's put this back into this part right here. So let's keep on going. This right here is the same as i times the integral from 0 to 1 of y to the power of 6 minus 4 times y to the power of 3 plus 4 minus y plus 4 times y to the power of 1 half minus 4 dy. And so if you look here, 4 minus 4 will just cancel themselves out. And so this is the same as i times the integral from 0 to 1 of y to the power of 6 minus 4 times y to the power of 3 minus y plus 4 times y to the power of 1 half dy. This is the same as pi times the antiderivative of y to the power of 1 6, which is just 1 over 7 times y to the power of 7. For this one, the antiderivative of this is just 4 times y to the power of 4, and you divide by 4, so you're just going to get y to the power of 4. And for negative y, you're just going to get 1 over 2 times y to the power of 2. 
for this one, you're going to get 4 times y to the power of 3 over 2, and you divide it by 3 over 2. So what you're going to get is 4 times 2 over 3 times y to the power of 3 over 2. And if you evaluate this, if you solve that, you're just going to get 8 over 3. So this is simply 8 over 3. And the boundary goes from 0 to 1. So that's it. This is equal to pi times 1 over 7 minus 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 8 over 3. So this is after you substitute these numbers into our formula. And this is going to be equal to pi times 6 over 42 minus 42 over 42 minus 21 over 42 plus 112 over 42. So 6 minus 42 minus 21 plus 112 is the same as 55 over 42. So the answer, this is equal to 55 over 42 pi. So this number right here is the answer and the volume of our solid of revolution.